Hey folks, my name is Davish and welcome back to another video in this series. Uh, so I won't be wasting much time and apologies for not posting a video yesterday because I was kind of busy. So what I'll do is I'll post a video of day 3 and day 4 what I did. Day 4 is today for me I guess and day 3 was yesterday so I'll be posting both the days work over here. Alright, so without further ado let us understand. So I've already written the stuff over here so that I don't waste your time over here. And uh, let's do this. Okay. So whatever you are saying over here is day three and day four. So the topic for today for day three is configure processes and communication. So there would be processes, there would be communication that is followed in any organization when you use Azure DevOps. Okay. So we'll, uh, the first thing is uh, planning. So we'll talk about the planning part. So you need to know agile, you need to know scrum. I hope you remember in the last video we discussed about this, you need to know about that. You can study about that. And the main part for planning comes for Azure board. So Azure board is something in which we plan stuff. In the Azure boards, we need to know uh, what exactly is an organization. First of all, we create a project in that. So you need to have an organization for that. And then we create a project in that. And then everything that comes uh, like repositories and stuff, uh, plans, test plans and everything that comes in, everything comes under an organization. So this you need to know. Okay. Uh, and then you need to know what exactly is a task, uh, what exactly is a work item, uh, epic user story issue, and you need to know the difference between all of them. Okay, so uh, how how I can create a task, how I, I can create a work item, how I can create an epic. Epic is like the tallest in the hierarchy, uh, sorry, at the top in the hierarchy, user story, what exactly does it mean, and issue. Uh, basic work processes and types. So there are multiple types like Agile, Scrum, CMM, etc. And what happens in basics, what happens in the other, what are the options that we get, get uh, that you need to know in this. Okay, you should know how to create all of them. So whatever I'm talking about over here, you should know how to create all of them. Uh, like Agile, there is something known as Kanban. Canvas is also one process uh, through which you need to know the idea and uh, how it happens. It has like four squares in which uh, you pick whatever you are doing, you move it over here, when it's done, when it's a review is done, it moves over here and then it, the story is finished. So something like that, you need to study about that. Okay, this is what I have studied. The process flow, what is the process, how it flows uh, in the Azure DevOps uh, that you need to know. Uh, and one other thing is adding tasks to user stories. So whenever you create a user story and you create a task, how do you add those tasks to the user story that you need to know? Uh, again, this is one of the most important thing I'll make a star over here is what exactly is a sprint, how to use. So if you've been working in an environment uh, in, a, in a company who has opted for agile methodology, you must be aware of the sprint. It's basically a two to three weeks of period in which you deliver something, uh, something deliverable. Okay. Uh, after that, you need to know what exactly uh, is a user creation. How do you create a user? What are the permissions that you can give to the user? Okay. This should be done uh, and then you should have to have an hands on on it. Uh, nothing like like just study and go for exam. Don't do that. Uh, using dashboard, filling stuff in it. I mean, you have to create dashboards and then you create work items and bugs and epics and over here and then you fill inside it. How do you do that? You need to know through this. Okay. And then once it is done, you have to get the data by the queries. You can either click, click, click. That's also fine. But you have to make queries so that you should be knowing. Okay. And again, this is the one in which a lot of questions are there, uh, which means permissions. Uh, permissions in the sense, like what kind of privileges you have. So there are multiples like build admin, it has some privileges, contributors, project admin, project valid users, readers, release admins, and teams. Okay, so uh, you can just create a team and then inside that you can put the users. So uh, all of these things, whatever you are reading it over here, you need to know how they differ in the permission. For example, the question will come that you have been doing this project and you're just a contributor over here. Would you able to trigger this? What would you do? And there would be multiple options that and then you have to pick it. So you need to know what exactly is the difference between contributor, project admin, project valid user, readers, release admin, all of that. Okay. After that in the permission part, there are two permissions as well, query permission and dashboard permissions. So you need to know about that. This is what I studied. And after that, you have to have a wiki. So wiki is something like where you put the information to share the information. And this is one of the questions that can come at what exactly is the backend. So backend is Git and project wiki also you can call it. Okay. So whatever you have the information of the project, you, you if you are not using Confluence or something, Confluence is a Jira product, Atlassian product, Azure DevOps has its own wiki. So there you can put it uh, something like a document kind of a thing, but on the web. Okay. 
and it's a part of azure devops and then uh, what is uh, delivery plans you have to study about like plan for delivery or uh, delivery plan this is or uh, delivery plans you need to know how do you do delivery and then this is uh, a good question that uh, good topic in which a lot of questions come ms teams uh, integration with azure devops azure boards basically so if you will do any kind of change uh, will the mail come will will the part come uh, notification comes to ms teams if the build is failing if the build is passing something like that it is coming to ms teams and that would be uh, the plan for day three okay so uh, let's move on to day four okay i'm sorry i think i made a mistake so this is not day three and four this is this should be day two and day three so we'll be now discussing about day three okay so this part whatever we did uh, this exactly this is day three okay sorry day two my bad this is day two and now we are going to discuss about day three okay so in day three we have design and implement source control and this is very interesting part so in this part you would be learning how to implement source control scm or sc so first of all you need to know what exactly is an scm source control management or source control basically uh, we'll be using git over here so you need to know what exactly is git uh, how do you install Git? How to work on it? So these are the things that you need to know. And I just completed this, uh, all of this. Uh, after that, you go to repository creation. Do you need to know what exactly is a repository? How is it related to the code? Creation, adding files in it, deleting the files, modifying the files, etc. That you exactly need to know. After that, commands and their rules. So there are multiple commands that are used in Git. You need to understand their role, what exactly it is are. For example, if I write git clone, so what exactly does it do? Something like that. Git fetch, git merge, git pull, something like that. You need to know. And how to work on a commit history. So commit history is something like when you have a code and you basically add code every time, then it creates a commit history in which you can easily make out that who has done the changes to what files. So this is something you need to know. And staging and unstaging, uh, what exactly is the difference between staging and unstaging changes? So staging is like making changes and staging it. Unstaging is, uh, staging is something like ready to commit. Unstaging is it like I'm not ready to commit, let's pull it back. Something like that. And branches, so how do you create a branch? So there is, you have must have heard about multiple branching uh, strategies like dev, QA, UAT, uh, pre-prod, prod, something like that. So that has, that that is all included in this branches. Uh, then uh, creation of branches, how you can create, how you can delete, how you can merge the branches. What's the difference between all of them that you need to understand that I just completed today. After that repository, what is the difference between a local repository and a report, remote repository? Is Does it have, have anything to do with my laptop? Does it have anything to, do, anything to do in the hosted service? What is the difference between? How do they work? So that's you need to know. And this is the most important interesting topic which is known as github so github is a hosted service uh, it is now owned by microsoft and microsoft i bought it i guess in like few years back i'm not sure about the air how do you make changes in your local and then you can push it to github so that's that's very interesting part and as a developer also you need to know this as a tester also you need to know this git is for everyone and then visual studio code so visual studio code is not an ide it's just an editor Okay, it's just an editor. So ID is integrated development environment. It's just an editor. So never tell anyone that it's an ID. It's just an editor. It's a product of uh, Microsoft. That's why uh, they teach about this in AZ 400. Uh, you need to know how to install Visual Studio Code, how you can create file inside it, how you can publish the code inside it using uh, publish the code to repository, which is remote. You need to know that. Then you need to know PR. PR means pull request or a merge request MR how to do it, what exactly is, what is the meaning, when do we do it, and what are the reasons of doing it. So this is something you need to know. After that, you need to know about merge and squash. This uh, is a part where tricky questions come in the exam and you can easily forget what exactly what squash, what exactly is merge. Merge is kind of easy, but uh, squash is something that people get confused on. And then tagging. Tagging is a very important topic because it plays a good role in the software industry when we go for a release. Tagging is that's why we use it. Why uh, and what scenarios do we use? You can Google it out. Uh, you can treat these videos as something like uh, you want to go through everything. Well, like once you have studied, just go through that. Okay, this is something that I've done. This is something that I've done. So you can do that. Uh, so there is a limit of uh, uploading file system in GitHub. Okay, and how do I operate with a large file system and how do you push in Git? 
so that's you need to know i think this is known as lfs but i'm not sure that so i won't write uh github to ado how do you import for example there is a repository that is present in github and but you want it in azure devops which is ado it's a short form and then how you can do that so that you should know the importing part then the branch policy branch policy is something like if i have done some changes in my branch if i raise a pull request how do you create branch policy how it should act should it be merged immediately should we do any kind of a check whether the code is fine or not and then we allow it to merge to the higher branch implementation part the security part this is something you need to know pipelines is not exactly a part of day uh, day 3 but uh, it will come in day 4 basically but uh, if you can study about it but this will help you in the next one so like i mean you may skip this i'll write like something like you can skip this because this would be covered in day 4 but if you have an idea then it would be really nice for you after that tfs tfs means the team foundation server team foundation server so you need to know about the history of this how uh, how was tfs working previously how uh, ado came into picture how it is related tfs to ado something like that and then how to create public and private project what exactly is slack and why do we use it slack is something like teams it's also a project uh, that has a, you you need to install it in a system and you can talk to the people and cherry picking very interesting topic so this cherry picking is one of the most interesting topic in git uh not just for azure devops for your uh, overall knowledge because a lot of people ask in interview what exactly is cherry pick cherry picking and what do you understand by it so you need to know and how to do it okay so this is something you need to do how okay so again i would like to reiterate that uh, this is uh, day 3 part uh, for design and implement source control and the top one was of day 2 i by mistake i wrote it day 3 and day 3 4 it's not that it's day 2 and day 3 so this is something what i completed till today i'm i've been uh, studying all this I, i'm more of a revising kind of a thing because i've already studied it once so i have completed four parts uh not four parts three parts uh the next time i'll be talking about uh, i'll be talking about uh, design and implementing of build, uh, build pipelines and you'll be understanding how we work on azure pipelines and treat this as a checklist that Uh, treat this video as a checklist like okay this is something i have done this is something i have known this is something which i need to work on write them down and then go through it all right uh, so i remember that i told that i will ask a few questions at the end but i am making a list now so i'll be asking them at the end of the course so that you can have an idea uh, of uh, whether things are going south or everything is all right or not okay perfect so uh, again if you don't understand anything you again if you, if you need advice on anything feel free to comment below and we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one